scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Every time God sends his word, his word comes with power, his word comes with healing, deliverance, and hope. Praise the Lord. This afternoon, the Lord showed me something that it's important we discuss and then we pray about. Every once and again, um, our assignment is not only to prepare sermons, but to be discerning enough to see what God is saying and to understand what he is doing part time. The Bible talks about the sons of Issachar. They had understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do. Praise the Lord. While I was just putting together this that the Lord uh, would have me share tonight, um, I got a text message that for me was again a confirmation and um, there's a lot going on in our world and in our society that is important. We are alive to it, we understand it, and then we pray. There is a growing trend of frustration, please listen very carefully, of depression and exhaustion. These three words the Holy Spirit used speaking to me. Frustration, depression, an exhaustion to be exhausted and the Lord told me that these are spirits that have been sent to the body even at such a time as this to shortchange many people from stepping into the fullness of God's Word and God's purposes in their lives even for this season and so my, my exhortation tonight as we pray is going to deal with two categories of people. Please listen. Number one, those who are severely under attack in their lives in this season. If you belong to this category, I have a word for you tonight. That there are people, there are families, there are individuals who it looks like they are in very, very trying seasons of their lives where all hell has broken loose over that individual, over that family, and it's important for you to be guided on the steps to take even to victory. Number two, those who um, are not necessarily attacked, but they are going through phases in their lives that are nothing unusual as far as greatness and destiny is concerned. It's important that we are used by God to help you interpret the happenings in your life so that you are not like them who are void of understanding. It is important that believers mature into understanding times, seasons, and the dealings of the spirit that comes with all of those times. Are we together now? So we're going to deal with these two categories of people. Can you lift your voice in one minute again and ask the Lord for understanding? Father, grant me understanding grant me 
understanding. Grant me understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. Please pay attention. Those following online, pay attention. If you know someone who belongs to these categories, even if not you, please pay attention for their sake. Hallelujah. There are not many things that can discourage a Christian. Please listen carefully. Um, but the few things that can discourage a Christian when they are there and they remain, the effect of their presence can be disastrous. I have identified two major um, issues, if I would say, that discourage Christians. Number one is on answered prayer. There's almost nothing more frustrating to a believer who genuinely loves God as a tragedy of unanswered prayer that people lift up their voice to heaven believing that god is alive releasing all their faith as much as they know and then not getting the answer that should be number two is an unfruitful christian life an unfruitful christian life that means that when your life with time is void of certain evidences that should be testaments of your service, your work to, for God. It's very, very frustrating when a believer gets born again and opens up his heart, serving the Lord, giving his best, and then with time cannot see um, the evidences. There are evidences, testaments that help us and help believers around us to appreciate the hand of God upon our life. So unanswered prayers and then an unfruitful Christian life. Now write this down, please. There is a goal. Let me start with those who are severely being attacked by the gate of hell. There is a goal. There is an object behind every attack of Satan. Listen carefully. That every time hell launches an attack on an individual on a ministry, on a family, on a couple, there is something behind the thinking of the devil and his cohorts. And the Bible did not leave us in the dark as to what Satan is really looking for. And if you do not understand, then you will continually be defeated by all of the, the attacks of Satan. The first goal behind every attack the first thing the devil seeks to achieve is to destroy your confidence in God and the integrity of his word please never forget this that every time the devil attempts to attack a believer he is attempting to attack your confidence in God and the integrity of his word what satan is really attacking is the integrity of god's word what satan is attacking is your confidence in god the bible says to cast not away your confidence why because it has a great recompense of reward are we together your confidence in god i don't know if i've shared it here but i remember i was in just for a meeting when I met a gentleman who was talking to me about his dad and he told me his dad was once a reverend in one of these great denominations around and having been frustrated repeatedly in the field the man not only turned away from God he made up his mind that he was going to move to another faith entirely he was so frustrated no school fees for his children no meaning for his life nothing seemed to work and he said look i've served this god i've preached about this god but i'm going to have to stop lying to myself it does not work you will think that you may never get to a point where you can consider this 
let me tell you something life has a way of pushing a man a family an individual to a point where you will doubt the reality of God was it not John the Baptist under pressure who said go and ask him if he's the Messiah or should we expect another for John to be thinking of another as the person who ordained Jesus it should tell you what situations and circumstances can do are we together so your confidence in God and the integrity of his word. Number two, the goal of every attack is to introduce the spirit of fear. This subject of fear is very, very, very important. You will be amazed at how many believers have been utterly destroyed because they became the victims of fear the bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion there is a reason why he says that fear is terrible it's a destructive spirit every other spirit stands in the line waiting for fear to open the door no other spirit can open any door that fear does not open failure waits for fear to open the door death waits for fear to open the door discouragement waits for fear all the spirits line up with the potentials of the havoc they can wreck but then they wait for fear a man who conquers fear has conquered many spirits automatically the bible says and to deliver them who through fear the fear of death now have all their lifetime been subject to bondage praise the Lord. fear Believers live in fear, fear of the unknown, fear of this and that and that and that. Today you see young people, even teenagers, having high blood pressure. This is something that a teenager should have no business with ordinarily. But fear, fear, fear of the future. How will tomorrow be? How will this happen? How will that happen? And that fear creates a lot of worry. Matthew chapter 6. Jesus took out time to teach and explain again and again on the fruitlessness of worry. He said, which of you by worrying can add even a cubit to his hair? He said, consider the lilies of the valley. Consider the birds of the air. They break a fundamental law of sowing and reaping. Yet your father, your heavenly father, is benevolent enough to make sure they are not hungry. Please listen very carefully. Sooner or later in your Christian experience, hell will be interested in you. I guarantee you. Except you do not love the Lord and you do not keep growing. A time will come when the impact that you continue to make will attract the attention of hell. Who is this young man who wants to rise and do what has never been done in this family? For as long as you remain down, that's all right. But then you, you it's, like a, it's like a spiritual thermometer. There is a level when you rise to, you attract the attention of hell. And they say, what is going on here? If we allow this young Moses, he can tomorrow be the deliverer. Do not take the baby for granted. Kill him while he's a baby. Don't allow him to grow. The potentials of his growth can be dangerous. And so discouragement comes. Discouragement. So many believers, listen. So many families have had, especially in this time that we live in, their faith shaken, discouraged. Students are discouraged. Workers discouraged. Graduates discouraged pastors discouraged church members you know it looks like there is this air of discouragement and depression when you say praise the lord people cannot say hallelujah in their minds they say for what hallelujah comes from the word halal yeshua praise the one who saves that's what it means you say where is the salvation that i should praise him Talk to an average believer about God. He will prefer you talking about rapture than talking about the faithfulness of God. Don't mention that word faithful to him. Because he tells you, I don't know what you are talking about. That reality is foreign to my experience. I do not yet know God as faithful. Faithful means keeping to your word. 
Faithful means justifying your integrity at all times. Please listen very carefully. So believers have been attacked here and there. And they think that the attack, listen, they think the attack is just on them just because they are Christians or just because the devil does not want them to have a job or have a child and so on and so forth. Listen, the devil is looking more than you. He's, he's trying to use you to make a statement to God that you are not faithful. So when you read scriptures like, since I was young, and now I am old. He says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. And you think of all your family members in light of this. He said, but this is a lie. This is not true. Foreign to my experience. And when the devil wants to make the statement stronger, he will handpick serious believers. He knows the impact. Listen, the discouragement of a serious believer has more impact than that of a believer that is not serious. Someone who is not serious with God, if he tells you things are not working, you tell him, what did you ever engage? I mean, we, we watched you in, in all that laziness, no prayer, no nothing. But when a brother who has been a prayer warrior serving in church, when a sister who has been serving faithfully in church, two years, three years, no child, four years, no child, then she now gets pregnant. And everybody begins to rejoice. Then at the fifth or sixth month, she will lose the baby in a way that can cause a problem. Listen carefully. That impact, another believer will now say, my God, what is this? If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, a time will come you will not see the need to continue again. There are many believers who are sitting down, but they've left God since. They are just coming to church because they know if you don't see him in church, you say, I didn't see you here yesterday. But the truth is that their hearts are not with God again. They, they are not yet bold enough to go to a harbalist. But you can be sure one leg is already coming out of the things of God. And that includes preachers. The frustration of fasting and praying for genuine spiritual power going around and emptying my accounts in need for impartation only to return back with nothing that shows i was called when an aspect of your life has results and then another aspect does not have results you can at least find consolation listen but when every area of your life lacks result is a cause for concern usually it will not disturb you till other brethren start saying but why is this so an attack on your confidence in God you started your Christian experience loving God you made bold and audacious statements about God and while you made that statement hell kept quiet like they didn't hear you I will never leave the Lord no matter what happens I will stand for him I will stand by him it doesn't matter and now five years without a child and you don't have the courage to make the same statement you made 10 years ago. I will never give anybody bribe to get a job. Remember you said it. And now here is a job that can reward you. Only if you can fish out 150,000. You can pay it back in a month. Your integrity is at stake. You made a statement that you will never bribe. But jobs continue to pass you again and again until the day your loved ones look at you and say you are a foolish portrait of a believer. Watching you is a discouragement to me. At first you would think that it did not touch you until you sit later on and say, but God, are you not watching? And then heaven is silent. Are we together When believers do not get results, they are vulnerable. When believers do not get results, they are vulnerable. Please listen to me. When believers consistently do not get results, they are vulnerable. They are put in a position where the, the faithfulness of God seems to be an issue that, they, that is worth debating about.
Behind every attack is the desire to challenge your confidence in God. It's your desire to challenge the integrity of God's word. Hallelujah. I got a text this afternoon about um, a gentleman who killed himself or so. I, I heard the story that there was a gentleman who killed himself. And if I'm right, I was told that the gentleman's brother or relative also killed himself. Now imagine, please, ladies. Imagine that you gave birth to children who killed themselves. Not that they died. Not a car accident. Not sickness. You left your child hugging your child in the morning and say, make sure I see you in the evening. And then you see people running somewhere and you join them thinking it's someone else's child. And there you see your child and the testimony is that he killed himself. Think of what society will do to you. Think of what other women will say about you. Say, this woman must have been wicked. It means that you do all kinds of things. Sometimes it seems like death is better than living. This is why people have the courage to kill themselves. And if you ignore a man that killed himself and don't help other people, very soon an entire area will begin to kill themselves. It's a spirit, but I've taught you how spirits work. They don't come and work with nothing. There is a raw material. They use your frustration as a raw material. They use your depression as a raw material. They create a, they, they create a system around your frustration. And that becomes the entry and the access point to your life. But we have come tonight to call the devil a liar. In the name of Jesus Christ. It says, but I know whom I have believed. Hallelujah. And I am persuaded. Listen to me. It is important. I will continue to teach this here, Koinonia. It is important the depth of your spiritual foundation. Remember my teaching a few weeks ago? That the deeper and the more solid your foundation, the more unbending you will be in the face of unfavorable situation. There are people who have dug so deep they have become like Paul. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. What shall separate us from the love of God? And then he begins to list a lot of things. Shall persecution, shall famine, shall A, B, and C. Frustration. And then the spirit of fear. You look around and see fear all over people's eyes. Fear. Financial fear. Marital fear. Fear of children. Fear of raising children. It will be very irresponsible of any preacher and any man of God to ignore these truths, especially in light of the realities that are in our world today. When people begin to hang themselves, when people begin to run away in discouragement, go to the hospitals, go to the psychiatric wards and see all kinds of people, young people, talking to themselves out of depression and frustration. Something is wrong. There has to be a people who will rise and say, Satan, you are a liar. Jesus is still on the throne and our, conviction, our convictions will not shake, we will not bend. Say, I reject fear. Say it again. Say, I reject fear. One more time. Say, I reject fear. Fear is a spirit. Reject it. Open your mouth in one minute. I reject fear. You are a spirit. I may not know everything about tomorrow, but I know the one who holds tomorrow. Hallelujah. He holds tomorrow. I reject fear. I reject fear. I reject fear. Fear is a spirit and all spirits are received. Any spirit that is received can be rejected. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, the spirit of power, and of a sound mind. 
fear of excelling in ministry fear of marriage fear of children fear of the future of children fear of finances how can i tell if i will live to see tomorrow how can i tell if i will not die in a ghastly motor accident tonight Hallelujah. Listen to me. Please look up. The believer who will never allow his confidence to be shaken and a believer who refuses to receive the spirit of fear, that is the believer that will weary Satan to victory. Literally. That you can weary the devil with your convictions. That regardless of what happens around you, you can stand in faith and say, my confidence, Lord, more than ever, I trust you. More than ever, I love you. More than ever, I will follow you as for me and my house. When a husband loses his job in one day, by the next month, the wife loses her job. By the third month, the child loses admission or something and three of them are seated with a Bible in the midst of them full of many promises. And then they do not know what to do. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. At that time, heaven is watching even as hell is also watching. Those who will not curse God because of their pain, if your pain will make you curse God, you are small. If your pain makes you curse God, you are weak. If your pain makes you curse God, your foundation is not deep enough. Are we together? Job's life kept being manipulated so that he will find offense in God. Even his wife said, look, Mr. Man, this is too bad. Curse God and die. Cause God and die. Are we together now? Yes. There is a couple, I don't know if they were able to make it here, but I'll be very impressed if they made it. The devil has attempted to challenge the husband and the wife again and again and again. And that man of God in his resilience, he said something that touched me one time while we were talking. He said, I will never be discouraged and I will never find fault in God. God is faithful. This is the language that moves heaven. That the devil says, can't you curse God? Are you blind? You still maintain your integrity and say God is alive. I got so many text messages from our young ones who wrote jam. Apostle, I've had you change people's jam. This is what I got. This is what I want to get. Pray. And they send sometimes more than 10 times that text. I believe I will die believing God is a miracle worker. But the question is, what if it does not change? <laughs> you don't like this part of God. What if it does not change? What happens to you when your expectation does not come to pass? What happens when what you saw in your vision does not manifest physically? What happens when God tells you by March you are a millionaire and by March you don't even have a job? Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You are eating this bread because the journey is far. Man of God, what happens when you start ministry with a lot of zeal? Assurances from financial partners. Just start, we are here. We believe in your vision. We will stand by you to the end. Four months, they say we've tried. Don't come near us for that rent again. I confess to you, my brothers and my sisters, that life can be very trying. 
life can be trying to the point that even Jesus would cry at Gethsemane and say being in the flesh I thought it would be easier but now I've carried the burden of men and even as the son of God I confessed that men are trying surviving the betrayals and the pain surviving the nakedness and the shame now alone praying in Gethsemane Jesus wept prayed till his tears became like drops of blood is God blessing you today there is a reason behind the attack that has come is currently on you or is on the way coming let me tell you this. <laughs> there are many believers who convince themselves that they are not creating any trouble. It's the reason why they never get serious with God because they hope that the devil will be busy attacking the Joshua Selmans who are causing trouble. Don't practice the foolishness of Esther. Mordecai told Esther that this plot is for all of us. It's just broken in faces. <laughs> Phase one is for those outside the palace, but phase two will catch up with you. For as long as you have named the name of Christ, let me tell you, you have made yourself an arch enemy to Satan, and he will come. I assure you, Jesus is fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He's done fasting and the first personality he meets is Satan. And hear what the Bible says. He departed for a season. For a what? Season. That means I'm coming. I don't mean to scare you. But I'm opening you up to the reality of living. He's coming. It's not only God that is coming. Maranatha is not just for God alone. Satan too is coming. Satan, just like faith, cometh. Is it not in your Bible, the thief cometh? He doesn't have to be invited. The thief cometh. To every family, he will come. To every ministry, he will come. To every life, please hear me, he will come. Oh, apostle, I've been enjoying my life. Everything has been wonderful. Keep going. Keep going. The world is not too large for his presence to reach. Satan is an expert in mobility. He testified his expertise in mobility before God. Where are you coming from? He said, from to and fro the earth. That's not a problem. I can voyage as many times as it will take to meet you. He will come. Let your finances begin to glorify God. He will come. Let your children begin to glorify God. He will come. Insult me today and thank me years later, but you must listen. Let your ministry begin to glorify God. He will come. Hmm. Let your life begin to glorify God. He will come. Let your home begin to glorify God. He will come. I think it was last week or so, I had the opportunity to counsel a couple I could not believe when they told me the antecedents of their marriage and the level of, of love and passion and friendliness they had. I could not believe that a couple who were disbonded today would be looking for a divorce. I said, what, what was so bad that you want to go out? Man of God, I've said my own. We didn't come here to debate. It's a conclusion we have made. I said, take it easy. There has to be a way. Hmm. Life, ba. If you don't know God, one day you will sit down on the road and say, before life kills me, let me kill myself. When you see people do foolish things, don't think they were born foolish. Are we together? When people go and buy this rat poison, what they call it? and add it to rice and turn it to eat and die they are not stupid people there is a way life can push you huh as a lady when a man has done your traditionals has done everything the invitation letter has come out 
and then he just looks at you and casually says i don't feel like doing it again because somebody told me you are a witch go and tell your father they can go with the dowry i'm gone at that point you would think you would smile and say oh no problem what is there god told you to live my life you, you will cry and not know what direction to turn to it is true that life can push you it is true that life can challenge you recently i had a conversation with a man that broke me i was going to pray for the man true story and the man looked at me and said apostle let me finish the story he said as i'm talking to you right now my beloved wife is in the mortuary i don't even have the money to go and bury her I'll not mention tribe, but he comes from a region where burial is not something that comes easy. And the man was just smiling. I said, your wife is dead. He said, yes, sir. Dead. My wife. I stood before everybody to exchange vows. We agreed to grow old together. Now she's gone. You think they didn't pray to raise that body back? The guy I'm talking to you is a born again and tongue talking Christian. What happens? You see, I've been to the mortuary many times, my brothers and sisters. As a man of God, you can imagine what happens when people die. I've been to the mortuary. They have closed me and left me with dead bodies in a mortuary alone. Why? Because they believe I'm anointed. And I believe I'm anointed. And I stood before a dead body that would not listen to me wake up in the name of Jesus and the body is looking hmm. there are times when life will act like that dead body hmm. there are times when your finances will act like that dead body there are times when your marriage can act like that dead body there are times when everything around your life can act like that. Please listen to me, believers. When you pray and nothing happens, and you pray again and nothing happens, and believers agree with you and nothing happens, you must know what to do. When the devil launches an attack, do you know what to do? Or do you just know that attack is real? Hallelujah. Years ago, I counseled one of our precious ladies. She's no longer here. And this lady told me that once a guy looks at her and says, I love you. I want to go and see your parents. That's the end of it. A strange being appears to her as usual. And that's the end of that relationship. If that guy does not get out of her life, the things that will get out of his life, you will not, his finances, just like Jonah, things will begin to leave. I can tell you that lady loves God and she's a Christian. Listen, if an unbeliever goes through certain things, it is natural. What happens when a Christian woman is barren? What happens when a Christian man is impotent? What happens when a Christian couple are broke? What happens when a Christian man and his wife and their children are standing in the name of the Lord and there is no roof for them that night? They don't know where they will spend the night. Yet Jesus is still Lord over their lives. Your confidence in God and the spirit of fear that comes upon you. A lecturer called me some months ago that he was relieved from his work. Not, not ABU here. One of the institutions. And I said, what happened? And just some issue that he, oh, he truly told me under God. Now, it's not for me to vet the rightness, but from as a man of God, I can tell you I discern he was true. Some persons just cooked up one or two things like that and that was it. The case had been pending, pending, pending and finally they just threw that man away. Out. No job. And the man was telling me, he said, where do I start from? 
there were monies they were supposed to give him nobody is talking about it and everything has gone I confess to you that life can be challenging I confess to you that when Satan attacks you he looks powerful because the attack is real you will see it and sometimes you will wonder Lord where were you when this came but tonight's message is for you let's look at a few scriptures hmm. John chapter 16 and verse 33 John 16 33 we are really going to pray tonight and when it's time to pray please hold even if it's prophetically the hands of your loved ones and everybody you know should be listening to this message and lift them before God as we cry John chapter 16 and verse 33 everyone read with me one to read Jesus is speaking uh-huh these things I have spoken unto you what things that in me ye might find peace why in the world ye shall have tribulation listen listen Jesus is speaking to believers and saying the possibility of tribulation is something that will be part of your experience that means acclimatize your mind do not think it strange when these things happen it says be of good cheer why because I have overcome the world second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17 second Corinthians 4 and verse 17 listen to this message matured believers and run away from some of these childish things that continue to give us very aberrated views of life for our light affliction why will you use the word affliction for a Christian one who is in Christ one who has sustained victory the fullness of the spirit the fullness of the Godhead in Christ resides in him Paul is speaking and says for our light affliction which is but for a moment he says walketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory for our light afflictions so it is not unusual for believers to go through afflictions nobody sits and prays for it but that is for any reason you find that reality around your circumference do not think it's strange rather be equipped with the understanding to deal with it to victory are we together now yes i will never forget years ago i was encouraging a gentleman generally just sharing with him i told him i pray for you to get a job but in case you don't get a job i was sharing with him certain business ideas and the guy almost shouted on my face, I, I reject, um, you know, that he rejected the statement I was saying that there will be delay in a job, you know. The Bible says he will not. I, did, I said, no, no, I'm a man of God. I pray, I'm not saying you will be delayed, but I'm saying if this possibility happens, while you wait for that blessing, be thinking of this and that. I don't mean to embarrass you, but till today, I'm not aware, except if he got it this year, but till today, he has not gotten a job. The same wisdom he would have listened to and his foolishness there is a difference between faith and foolishness they are not the same the same way a matured mother will be mentoring a young lady who is about to get married and get pregnant and say we do not we, we are not discouraging you but we are just saying that there might be these possibilities and that if this comes there is a wisdom way to route it no i reject it I, my, my womb is blessed nobody's arguing it until life shows you pepper and then you turn and say ah so this thing is like that a man parked his car 
and ran to deal with somebody quickly and came out and met space. His car had gone. In the afternoon, broad daylight, the car that was dedicated in church, don't forget, don't forget, almost every church dedicates cars. This car was dedicated in the name of the Lord by a genuine man of God. Genuine oil was poured on it. And now a thief enters and the oil did not seem to do anything. The prophecy didn't seem to do anything. That guy kicked that car and ran away with it. And where were the angels that keep watch? Did the Bible not say that they will bear you up on their wings? What suddenly happened to that man who put a speaker, I am victorious, behind the car that was stolen? What happens when a believer is in church and armed robbers are in the house stealing? Have you not heard this? Or you don't say it in church. It should not be said, Abby. That you are worshipping God and rolling on the ground. Lord, I give you my heart. And an armed robber breaks your door. And the all-seeing eye of God does not seem to be able to restrain that robber. He enters your house and goes to look for the areas you just collected and carries it and runs away. You share the grace with joy and go back home into a week long of depression. I'm a man of faith. I'm a man that believes in miracles. But I must teach you the reality of navigating through these things in life. I don't mean to embarrass our precious lady, but one of our ladies here, I remember very clearly one time her mother, it was in a, it was in a night vigil. They were praying, not in a party not in a club a night vigil they were praying lifting up the name of the lord fiery prayer suddenly a woman stops drops dead and dies that's how the mother died i remember when that lady called me that night crying and saying apostle how can my mother die in the place of prayer it's the same thing like saying how can jesus die but he died how can life die? Life died. How can light be dark? Light became dark. Sometimes the unexplainable happens. Like life dying. Like resurrection being grounded on the cross. <laughs> James chapter 1 and verse 1 to 4. I like what this teaching is doing to you. You will thank me tomorrow. Add it to your spiritual arsenals so that you will draw it forth in the days that are rainy days. For some of you, the dark cloud is already before you. And you will need to know this. James, let's go to verse, um, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Why? Next verse. Knowing this, knowing this. Tell your neighbor, knowing this. There are things you need to know. Knowing this. This is your immunity. This is your basis for stability. Knowing this. There are things if you don't know, you cannot rejoice in the midst of pain. It says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith Walk at patience. Verse 4. It says, but let patience have her perfect walk. Do you know what this means? Don't interrupt what is happening. Let patience have her perfect walk. That ye might be mature and complete. Wanting or lacking nothing. Jesus told us very clearly. That it's not unusual for believers to be challenged by the gates of hell and then also the bible did not leave us in the dark that the journey of the believer is not just a smooth road 
that there are mountains and there are valleys in the making of great men in God's kingdom. Listen very carefully. There is a place where the refiner's fire. I preached a controversial message years ago on the furnace of affliction. And several people said, don't mind that message. Just believe, you know, and so on and so forth. There is a real experience in a believer's making called the furnace of affliction. I repeat, there is a real experience in the making of men that are as precious as gold called the refiner's fire. It is not the destroyer's fire. It is the refiner's fire. Are we together? Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. It says, I have called you by name. You are mine. Are we together? It says, Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. Fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. There are times that God will not say, I will be with you. He will say, I will help you. But there are other times he says, I'm there. Just find comfort that I'm there. There's no guarantee that I will put my hand in that process. But be assured that my presence is there. <laughs> and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Now listen, he said when you walk through fire, you don't pass through fire, you walk. There is a roasting process that takes time. There is a separation. You don't put meat around fire and you have something nice. You drop it there, then turn it again. Then turn it back to where you turned before. Then turn it again. And when it is done, people enjoy it. Listen, what do you think the anointing is? Have you found out how oil is made? That the threshing floor is not a place of laughter. That oil does not want to go through that train. Believers, we have been spoon-fed into believing that all it takes is to get born again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be Apostle Joshua Selman. I want to be Benny Hinn. It is doable. It is achievable. But can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? That's what Jesus said. Whoever told you there is no cup to drink and whoever told you there is no baptism, there are times when your prayers will deliberately not be answered. This is not a conventional teaching. Many people say, God forbid, all prayers are answered. I agree. It depends on the level you are seeing from. Because the Bible says there is the heel of the Lord. It says, who shall ascend to the heel of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? There are planes in the spirit. And not every experience is the same at every plane. There are planes that are general experiences. And you can write a theology from that standpoint. But you climb like the eagle to a mountain where the Holy Ghost defeathers you. Have you seen how eagles mount up and renew their wings? They rise to a high altitude and right there by themselves, they, they remove the old feather and they are left naked in the cold. And they stand there and then suddenly new feather begins to come out slowly. There are things that the tempo has been preset. It will not be accelerated because of your tears. It was designed to be that slow. If the process hurries too much, you will not learn what you should learn. <laughs> mm. That you are trusting God for money to eat. As soon as 10,000 came, God said, carry 1,000 tight. Carry 1,000 your own. Carry 8,000 my own. Go and sow. And you say, why did it come then? I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something to you that breaks the power of mammon in your life. Because what is coming to you, eye has not seen. Ear has not heard. It has not entered the heart of any man. So I need to train you. If 10,000 is difficult for you to receive, and you are shouting, I'm a millionaire. You are joking and flattering yourself. We continue to do these foolish things in church. That's why the world looks at us and says, these people, something is wrong with them. 
The faith life is not foolishness. People must be educated to understand the pathway. The way to the throne is the cross. You will never, there is no bypass. There is only one line. Man of God, hear me. You admire everyone who speaks under the influence of God's power. Fine. Let me tell you, when the anointing for service comes, it doesn't come as oil, it comes as olive. There is a breaking process that will turn that olive to the oil. It is true. There is a threshing floor in your life that is in the similitude of the threshing floor of Naboth. Where there are things that are threshed there. Unfortunately, it's not wheat, it is you. You are that living sacrifice that must lie there. Hear me? There are times that the things happening in your life can only be interpreted by those who have passed that road. No other believer can see and it can make sense. Now, God gives you a rule and says for the next five months, I meet with you from 11 to 3 every night, regardless of how tired you are. And some man of God will tell you, no, it's not in the word. God doesn't do that. Pray when you need to pray. God gave you a will. I agree. And the man is right. He is not wrong. But with respect to your training, violate that instruction and power will be far from you. Far from you. Show us the ancient paths. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient path. That so many have left. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to answer your listen. Rest. The path to glory does not have laughter as part of the equation, except you are laughing by the anointing. He that sows in tears. A farmer laughing by the farmer has not started farming. The size of the instrument alone will take away laughter. But you have to farm. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. There are many people who see every blessed man and just dishonor them. Ah, these young people, they just became rich. Please keep quiet. Find out the cross behind what you see. And then you will know that nobody was dashed well. You see young people with anointing, all these young boys, where did they get it from? Go and find out the pain. Find out what they were doing when you were sleeping. Find out the covenants that they, that they tied themselves with like a rope. All these people who have great ministry, be careful oh, you don't know where they are getting the crowds from. You are joking. You go and find out people's cries and covenants with God. I know a man of God who said when he went to Lagos for the first time, he slept under the bridge. He was not a poor man. God instructed him to give everything he had. He got to Lagos and slept under the bridge like a fool. Imagine if you were his relative and you saw him. He said, sorry, uncle, what are you doing here? He said, God sent me. Imagine that it was your daughter that kind of man married. Won't you carry your daughter back home? But today everybody celebrates him. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, do not think it unusual when you are following the path of champions. It's a lonely road. Did you hear what I said? Do not think it unusual. I speak to you. There are many men and women of God here. You thought by now you will start a church. You are surprised you are still on, tra on training. There are others who are jumping classes and running around. Leave them home and stay quietly with God. Because there is a making. Huh. Making. Ask a coach how a champion is built. 
the coach will subject that person through exercises. The person will run. The person will cry. Coach, I am tired. And the coach will say, no, this is not you. The version of you I seek to produce is not the you I'm seeing. Sometimes when God pushes you, it's proof of his confidence in you. Others got there and God said, no, they've reached the elastic limit. But for you, he says, no, I know what I put in you. Let's push a little more. There are certain levels of glory that I've been waiting for who will push to this level. Everybody stopped here. You can, don't, don't disappoint me. Push a little further. On one side, believers can be attacked. But on another side, without an attack, the default design of the pathway to glory requires, like pilgrim's progress, there are mountains to climb. Listen very carefully. There are valleys to follow. There are times you will sleep in the desert. There are times you will not know where you are going. You will just keep going and hope you are right. We didn't come this far by luck. We didn't come this far by chance. It is true we came by grace, but grace that was not abused. It is not grace that did the work. Grace empowered us to comply. Behind every glory, are tears and blood sleepless nights and sacrifices as any great man champions hear me being a champion is not just a confession ask a pregnant woman when she gives birth to the baby like a dear one here who gave birth and we're all rejoicing but ask her how it was Right now, you are carrying something that others are not carrying. Don't expect them to understand you. If everybody around you understands you, it's a sign that you are not going anywhere. There are times only God can understand you. Let me tell you. There are times only God can understand you. While others are sleeping, the Holy Ghost takes away sleep from you. He giveth his beloved sleep. But from you, he took it so that you will wake up. And you are walking around your house and crying. Lord, what is the name of what you are doing with me? He calls it refining. Lord, what is the name of what you are doing with my life? Is this how useless my life is going to be? You have honored other people. Look at what you are doing. At least show me where I'm going. Let me be convinced that you are leading me. And he says, the seeming confusion is part of the process. So that I teach you that you don't have to understand me to follow me. There are times that it's in your obedience that understanding comes. Lord, if you don't show me where I'm going, I will not follow. You will never get to the place of destiny. There are times you start that journey far before it later makes sense. Come out of Ai of the Chaldeans to a land that I will show you. I don't give you no vision for it. Keep moving. Carry your child along because you will kill him sooner or later. These are messages you will not hear in the church again. It's not all about receive. It's not all about be a champion. The anointing does not work like that. There is stability. I show you the way of champions. I show you the way of the ancient. I show you the, the way to build stamina where you are given the keys of territories. To him that endures to the end that will give a crown and a white stone, he said. Please don't let anybody deceive you. If it is that cup, you must drink of it. If it's that baptism, you will be baptized. If it has not started, it will start. So I'm teaching you so that you will understand that when everything in your life looks strange and God says, empty your account. When you were a baby Christian, you emptied your account and in 24 hours times 10 came. So you took that mindset to rush and say, ah, if it's God, I know he's Jehovah Sharp Sharp. I agree, but not for your training. Sharp Sharp will be when you are on stage. Then you prophesy to someone and he gets a miracle alert. 
but I tell you not during your training. You will get no miracle alert. What you will get is the faith to endure. I shared with you my story. Today I pray and people receive breakthroughs. I shared with you years ago when out of hunger I took a step of faith and joined a queue in First Bank believing that miracle alert will come. This miracle alert thing didn't just start now. It was built in the spirit. So then death works in us that life will work in you. Whatever you die to is what you give life to people in. Let me tell you, this is how it works. You have never been disappointed. Forget about carrying the power of God. No, it's not for children. You must taste of this cup called shame. You must taste of this cup called embarrassment till your ego is drained like a transfusion from someone and the life that I now live. It is no longer about if you are not healed, I'm not a man of God. No, your ego is gone. It went with the training. You started the ministry with ego. So every time you want to pray for the sick, your reputation is there. And he said, young man, you can't do ministry that way. It is not about the results. It is about my glory. It is painful to be approved of God. This is why you stand and run your mouth over people that God approved. You will be surprised what happens to you. It's true you are a believer, but you will know that everyone is not the same. Let no man trouble me, he said, for I bear in my body. I'm speaking to men and women inside and outside here. You are in these defining moments, and I must tell you what is happening in your life. Because if you are not careful, you will run around and meet people, and they will say, no, um, it's because you don't have faith. No, I show you the way of power. Let me tell you this. Listen, listen. I don't claim to know everything about the faith life. I am just an effective member of the body. But I tell you this, when I teach people on how the anointing is made, and I teach people how men are made, it's an office. I don't teach you cunningly devised fables. I'm like a lecturer that has been teaching this for a long time. You ignore what I tell you is to your own peril, that which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have handled. The keys of nations will not be given to you just because you prayed. There is blood that must touch that altar. And not some. Everything. It must be drained till you are empty. Your tears will not stop him. Not even your fears. You get to a point where all your fears happen to you. And there's nothing else to fear. You have come out of the realm, not by escapism. I'm afraid. One of the ways boldness is given to you is what you fear is brought before you so that you no longer can fear. God shows you your fear right before you. You pray that he takes it away, but you pass through it and there's no longer fear. This is the making of men. This is the threshing floor of Naboth. This is how the great are made in this kingdom. Apostle, I'm calling to the ministry of kingdom finance. I think all I need is just a seminar and some impartation. <laughs> you are joking. You are even the one who will need to die more than a preacher. Because mammon is a spirit that God even recognized. Abraham, take now thy son. Thy only son whom thou lovest. Take him to a mountain. God, is this the price to be the father of nations? I'm not interested. What is that? I wait for a child for 25 years and you ask me to hand him over. Yes, sir. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over, 
Take over, take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come end of myself hallelujah hallelujah I have come to the end of my hey, hey, hey. take over Listen, listen to me. I got to a point in my life where God so dealt with me, it was like there was no life again. That you get to a point where you don't know the name of your life or destiny again. No name. You are like Cain. And the more I kept moving like the wind, I didn't know that's how spiritual men are. Because it says the wind bloweth where it listeth. You cannot tell where it's going or where it's coming. So is one who is led by the Spirit of the Lord. I truly wanted the power of God in my life. And I prayed. I said, Lord, please give me power. I thought the answer would be a bed that would land on my head. And he would say, son, from this day, I have given you power. Power to open doors that no man can shut you are joking power to speak over nations no sir no sir no sir those keys are hidden in your scars you keep them there oh I apologize if you don't like what I'm teaching you tonight but this meeting is for the great because I see that season coming again it's like a cycle and a season comes when there is a new recruitment a new recruitment it's always like that and then the ones that have been recruited God starts working with them after some years he says now there is a, an opening again that can scare me that can scare me cause I know I'm dead already in my reason in my seasons i cry out this is the end of me hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of myself hallelujah listen Please listen to me. Not every negative thing happening to you is demonic, is of the devil. N not every negative thing will answer to prayer. There are certain things where it is the grace of God that will be sufficient for you. There are times in my life I fasted and fasted. I didn't know the difference between being full and being empty. This is our generation. We, we truly have this honor. Truly have this honor. Please don't just see every young man you are seeing and believe that just because they are young, it means that they were given certain things as a dash. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. There were nights when everyone would be sleeping. I would be on the roof of vet medicine in ABU. The roof of it in the night. From night till morning. In that roof. Seeing visions and revelations. But staying there in that cold. 
with mosquitoes. Just a little inconvenience and people begin to complain. You are talking of giving some seed. I never had the opportunity to spend my scholarship once. Once. It was a sacrifice before it arrived. So when today someone says, Apostle, give me your phone, let me send you money. Please, there is a track record. Let's honor the pain of people. Let's honor the pain of people. Man of God, the anointing is for the taking. Grace is for the taking. The pride that we have just because of our one, one or two, two hours prayer. I will never forget times when I would lock myself for three days. My eyes will not see the sun. I don't know whether it's day or night. I don't know whether it's nine o'clock or ten o'clock. No sleep with these eyes open. Praying from morning till night, morning till night, morning till night. Shakata kata. Lord, expand this vessel. Expand this vessel. Let me be a, a conduit of your power. That was a prayer. Not for myself. Lord, for your glory. Let it please you that I will be used as a vessel. And one day God vowed a vow and said, my son, I give you my presence as a gift. There is a threshing floor in the life of every believer. Please hear me. I'm addressing those who are being attacked and those who are going through seasons they do not understand. Do not think that it is demonic. Please sit down and give me a few minutes. And then we are going to pray tonight. Let me get back again to those who have been attacked and show you a few keys. It applies to everybody. But please write this down. Hmm. I remember praying years ago and I said, Lord, why is it that when I speak, nothing happens? I read the Bible and I saw in the life of Peter that while Peter yet spake these things, the Holy Ghost fell on all they that had him, not all they that believed in him. If your ears could hear Peter, the Holy Ghost will come to you. I said, Lord, why don't I see this in my life? Not for pride. And God let me know that everything in the kingdom is yours for the taking, but there are dimensions. Not all things are possible at every level. There are real dimensions. Number one. The first key that I will give you to minister comfort tonight. Overflow one. I'm seeing lights all over overflow one. This is what I'm seeing. Lights. I'm seeing an impartation. Lights, 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 just like, like thunder, like lightning, light. I believe it's an impartation, just overflow one, just caught my attention. In the name of Jesus Christ, that which God has in store, let it come upon you in Jesus' name. Number one, the first key that you need to survive these seasons, whether a season of attack or a season of pruning and dealing and refining. Number one, never lose your joy. Please never lose your joy. In this kingdom, joy is strength. Never, never lose your joy. Hmm. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Please write quickly. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 rejoice in the lord always not always always as you go 
rejoice in the Lord always and again I repeat rejoice joy joy is of the Holy Ghost though. joy is not just clownish laughter you don't have to laugh to be in joy Lord I don't know the name of what you are doing but I rejoice I rejoice I rejoice I rejoice I rejoice <laughs> I rejoice true joy will come in form of a melody on your lips a melody that does not make sense sometimes a melody that mocks your situation still sing it joy joy Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10b popular scripture but many of you don't know where it is in the Bible Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10b it says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. That the joy of the Lord, that means when you lack strength in this kingdom, what you lack is joy. In the physical world, when you lack energy, you are given food. Is that true? In the realm of the spirit, when you lack joy, I mean when you lack strength, what you are given to eat is joy sometimes God does not give you the solution he gives you joy 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 he said count it all joy count it all joy the shame yes sir the pain yes sir the no admission yes sir the disappointed meeting that I called people and I said sick people come and at the end nobody was healed and that you went back home and somebody sent a text and said next time be a serious man of God before you call us the Bible says, count it all joy it comes alive every time I hear your voice it comes alive every time I hear your voice there's a joy in my heart in spite of all the sorrows that surrounds me and this joy that I have only comes alive every time I hear your voice it comes, it comes alive every time I hear your voice. Can you watch your car on fire? Your 2.5 or 3.5 million, and you stand and say, To God be the glory, great things He has done. Can you watch your job and you stand at the gate of your office? It was once yours, but now no longer yours. And say in it, oh God, I give you glory. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? Can you stand before a corpse and you are looking at a dead body that you fasted for days to come back to life? And you say, in spite of it, oh God, with the tears coming from my eyes, I still give you glory. I thought the dead body would come back to life. But now I have prayed. I give you glory. Never lose your joy. Let nothing in this life steal your joy. Not lack of money. Not lack of a child. Please listen to me. This gloominess we carry around is cheating us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Make up your mind to rejoice in the Lord. Why are you rejoicing and crying? I'm crying because of the reality of my pain but I rejoice because joy brings harvest you will sow in tears but you will reap in joy not with joy in joy if there is no joy there is no harvest number two what do you do in these seasons engage in strategic prayer listen the seasons of attack in a believer's life 
or a season of pruning and making there are seasons of deep spiritual emphasis there are seasons of prayer and intercession that's not the time to pray morning and evening that's the time to pray anyhow and anytime because you are in a season your anchor will be your prayer hallelujah day and night you are praying lord i don't know what is happening to my life but i'm praying you have your prayer time in the morning you have your prayer time in the evening but every time is prayer time every time is prayer time an evil report your wife just lost her child what are you doing i am praying why i'm in a season is any man afflicted james chapter 5 and verse 13 let him pray let him pray not let him discuss not let him grumble around not let him call god names and say i will backslide let him pray psalm 34 please from verse 4 to 7 and then the last part and we will pray psalm 34 i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from what all my fears next verse we are reading to four to seven they looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed six the poor man cried and the lord heard him and saved him out of how many all his troubles last verse the angel of the lord encampeth around them that fear him and delivereth them prayer is a powerful weapon in all seasons but especially this season lord what is happening around my life my wife just got attacked my son just got attacked my job just got attacked i am not understanding what is happening i set myself like daniel onto prayer god grants you grace you can add with fasting add with fasting this spiritual laziness of eating anyhow anytime many believers now fast as a ceremony three days fasting you carry it on your head as if you as if it's, it's 12 years fasting If you love food more than your destiny life will cheat you again and again food is okay oh, but please let me tell you mighty ones you must learn to show food that your spirit man has grown above it there are many of you here you cannot remember I may be wrong I'm not saying you should do it please I'm not saying you should do it but as far as I'm concerned, there are spiritual levels that if you get to, a week should never pass that you did not fast. You are joking. You are joking. Not with what you are doing to hell. You are joking. Seven days. Ah, no. Himarama. <laughs> Imarama Imarama to the king who sits on the throne Imarama to the king Listen let me tell you this I will continue to teach you this secret real victory real victory in prayer is gotten while men sleep real victory is not gotten shouting around just making noise real men of power contact power when men sleep
may God give you the grace to rise above sleep I'm praying from the may God give you the grace to not allow sleep cheat you that God can wake you up in the night no light off the light you are praying don't allow distractions you are praying the next thing you see one of your trousers and it's enough to distract off the light you can use your phone light you are in the night alone and watch what happens you are nobody seeing what you are doing but there is a register every day you are signing it is the day you get to the stage to preach that's when God will not disappoint you you don't come on stage and talk nonsense lion of the tribe of Judah rose of Sharon lily of the valley rose of this and that and that God is not a scammer he's not a magician no track record in the secret place you will flatter yourself to nothing in it in the open please learn to pray in the night learn to pray in the night learn to pray in the night receive grace to dedicate night times and pray God didn't give you a house just to keep things turn everywhere to a prayer altar Turn your toilet to a prayer altar. Turn your living room to a prayer altar. When everyone has gone off the television, don't pray watching a film. Even if it's a Christian movie, you are not praying. Shut it down. Lord, this is me and you here. I don't know what is happening to my life. A time will come, you feel like just leaning. Get up and say, Satan, you are a liar. I'm going far. A time will come, your tongues begin to change. What you are saying, it will never be what you started with. You, are, you, you have entered a level in the spirit. Tongues are languages. And there are levels of power contact. Groanings that cannot be uttered. You get to a point in the spirit where you begin to pray. There are times that only one word, one phrase will come out of your mouth for minutes. Pray it. You are receiving power. Prayer is not something you do in a group so that people will see you and think you're a prayer warrior. Don't joke with your destiny like that. Don't joke with your destiny like that. The Bible says to enter and shut the door behind you. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father who is in secret. You don't need to have a prayer point. You don't need to have a prayer point. Just stay there and begin to pray. And while you are praying, your flesh is weak, but your spirit is willing. Listen, can I tell you this? There is a level of fire you bring on any attack in your life. It must give way. It must give way. Fire is an emblem of the spirit. It's one of the emblems of revival. It's one of the emblems that show that the spirit is in a place. Fire does not only refine. Fire is for judgment. There are times you need to stay like a priest upon the watch. My brother and my sister, if you pray from your heart, some things will shift. You will wake up in the morning and know I shifted this through prayer. There are attacks that only prayer can challenge. Pray for me, pray for me is wonderful. But you must become the priest of your destiny. 
Can someone just blast in tongues for just one or two minutes? Salamakata. Senakandas Kamahasabash. Rakata Pakato Sopokoto Sheketelekata. Emprata Seneketo Janikata. Tasete Shanahas Kabaratos. Reketeketekete Kabarakatos. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, I'm in a season of my life. I cannot afford to be lazy. I'm in a season of my life. I cannot allow my prayer life go down. It's too risky. Not for this season. Not for this season. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. Oh, take away slumber from my eyes. Take away slumber, oh God. Skabaratoskama. There are scores to settle in the realm of the spirit. There are things to shift in the realm of the spirit. There are things to align in the realm of the spirit. I need to legislate spiritual realities. While men slept, while men slept, the enemy came and saw tears. Pray. Pray. Outside, pray. Through the king who sits upon the white home. Through the king who sits upon the white home. Shela bakata rekotosia imarama 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 to the king who sits on the throne imarama. To the king who sits on the throne. Eshena balara. Ele, 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 ele. Ela barata katosh, brande katela katosh. Ekata brakatosh, kale kata brasana kata. Karuse sene katosh, alatos ke mahasa. Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. To the king who sits upon the white horse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying. Psalm 125. Prayer gives you stamina to pass through seasons. Jesus prayed, otherwise, you would have given up. He said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, use the same strategy to strengthen, strengthen. Prayer is a strengthener. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abided forever. Next verse. As the mountains are around Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. Next verse. For the rod of the wicked 
shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put his hands in iniquity. Next verse. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. We are reading till the last verse. As for such as turn aside in their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace upon Joshua Selman. Prayer gives you stability. In the next two, three minutes, you are going to pray. And say, Lord, let this prayer stabilize me. I shouldn't be shaking over everything. I should be able to laugh at certain storms. And say, Jesus is Lord. Lift your voice and pray. Stability. Power. Stamina. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Stability, O oh God. Stability, O oh God. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. Your strength is small. Give me capacity, endurance, stamina. The grace to pass through for the sake of my family. The grace to pass through for the sake of my generation. The grace to pass through for the sake of my, my loved ones. Be strong, be strong, be strong. Be strong in the Lord. Don't be weak, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord. Koinonia, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Don't entertain weakness. Be strong in the Lord. You are not the weak ones. You are strong. Hallelujah. The third key I will give you tonight. Number one, never lose your joy. Number two, engage in strategic prayer and intercession. Number three, prophesy. The power of the spoken word. There is no greater time in your life to engage the creative power of God's word than when things just go haywire. The power of the spoken word. The power of the spoken word. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28. Numbers 14. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. There are times that you don't just pray. You pray till the spirit of prophecy comes on you. When it does come, you speak. He said, prophesy. Speak to the dry bones. Prophesy. Oh, dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord said prophesy there are times you need to prophesy there are times you need to speak psalms 138 and verse 8 very powerful scripture psalms 138 and verse 8 please give it to us quickly we're going to pray the lord will perfect that which concerned me thy mercy O lord endure it forever forsake not the works of my own hands you lift it in prayer i prophesy and i declare the lord is perfecting everything concerning me 
I declare that I come out victorious. The Bible declares that goodness and mercy follow me. You don't just cry and say, hey, yeah, so is this how my life is going to be? This is what I've become now. No, sir. Nothing moves till you prophesy. I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. You see, that's why it is important for a believer to be full of God's word. If you are scripture bankrupt, you will not know what to say. Prophecy is not just when God reveals something like word of knowledge. You can take the word of God and begin to create possibilities. It's important to know the word. It's important to know the word. When it looks like things around you are not working, you go to Psalm 3. Many are they that rise up against me. Many are they which say, where is your God? It says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. It's unfortunate for believers who don't know the word. You must trust God for grace to sit down and gather relevant scriptures that address the issue of concern and stand up like the priest that you are. Put those words in the lips of faith like Kenyon would say and begin to release them with true supernatural power. The Lord is my light and salvation. The Lord is my light and salvation. I reject confusion in my life. I hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. This is how to pray. Is someone ready to pray? Listen to me. There are many of us who have gotten to the stage in our seasons where it is our prophecy that will bring the morning. If you don't prophesy, nothing will happen. Is someone ready to pray? If you don't know what to say, go and hold the hands of someone who knows what to say and agree with them. Lift your voice and begin to speak. There has to be a scripture that you know. It shall keep them in perfect peace. Whose minds are stayed towards him. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered him from them all. From them all. From them all. And I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten, the palmer worm, the caterpillar. It will give them beauty for ashes, joy for the spirit of mourning, that they might be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord and he shall be glorified behold I do a new thing shall ye not know it I make a way even in the wilderness streams in the desert the Lord shall perfect all that concerns me all the days of my appointed time I wait till my change comes when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion they were like them that dream so said they among the hidden the Lord had done great things for us he said the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. I am the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. I shall lay up gold as dust, even the gold of Ophir. Gentiles come to my light, their kings even to the brightness of my rising. For my shame I receive double. Elas kabarandes kalapro oshoda bahasia.
but my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil fresh oil fresh oil blessed in my going out blessed in my coming in blessed is the work of my hands my needing trough in the name of Jesus Christ Blessed is a man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. My seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in my house, and my righteousness endures forever. Pray. Pray. You are not just speaking, you are creating. Declare thou that ye might test be justified. For by your words you are justified. And by your words you are condemned. You are bringing before God your strong reasons. Above only, above only, above only, above only, in the name of Jesus, above only, above only, a sign and a wonder, a testament of the grace of God, a testament of the favor of God, a testament of the hand of God, a testament of the mercy of God. Though weeping endures for a night, joy comes with the morning. Prophesy joy in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 32, Genesis chapter 32, the Bible says, Jacob wrestled with God and he said, leave me for the day breaketh. He says, I will not let you go unless, listen, unless you bless me. Here's how God blessed him. What is your name? What is your identity? What have people known you with? I'm about to change it. That's how I bless you. If I blessed you truly, it means something they used to say about you. A proverb should no longer be heard. What is your name? And he said, Jacob, a cheat and a supplanter. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Why? For as a prince, you have had power with God and prevailed. We are going to pray. Father, change my name. In this season, listen. Change my name means change my experience. Change my name means change the proverb. Let this proverb not be used about me again. That God cannot show him mercy. That God cannot lift my family. Let this proverb change. Like father, like son, no sir. Open your mouth and cry change my name change my story and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren Jabez the mother called him Jabez named him in sorrow but Jabez was angry he said oh that thou wouldest bless me enlarge my coast is someone praying Lord change my financial name Change my ministerial name. Change my marital name. 
change my destiny name out of the abundance of your mercy by the encounter I've had with you change my name change my story change my name give me a testimony shut the mouths of the wicked prove once again that you are God and that by yourself please pray God answers prayers give me a new name hallelujah hallelujah next prayer point the Bible says he touched the hollow of his thigh and it became twisted Lord may I never depend on my strength it says trust in the Lord with all your heart Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 and lean not on your own understanding it says in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path the next verse says do not be wise in your own understanding but fear the Lord and turn away from evil you are going to pray Lord I've trusted my certificate I've trusted my connection I've trusted my beauty I've trusted my spirituality but tonight I take my eyes away from all of this as advantageous as they are they looked on to him and their faces were lightened I look to you and to you alone lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray we are praying I take my eyes away from man it is true that my blessings come through men but my eyes are fixed on you is someone praying We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Like the brazen serpent that Moses made, he said, whoever looks to that serpent, the real one will not strike at him. Vain is anything that you put your strength on. So Jacob, I see you stable without me. I touch your point of stability so that you will be ever dependent on me. The last prayer point. He said he blessed him and the sun arose until then it was night the war happened in the night the weeping happened in the night but then he says the sun arose and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel the face of God he says for I have seen God face to face when Moses saw the face of God, he returned back with a testimony. Is someone ready to pray? Lord, let the sun arise. It is true that weeping endures for a night, 
but I believe I'm standing at the dawn of my morning. Lift your voice and prophesy. Let my son arise. Son arise. Financial son arise. Ministerial son arise. The encounter is over. The lessons have been learned. The impartations have been received. Therefore, night time be turned today. Night time be turned today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep standing. We're rounding up. Let me tell you three things that come into your life when you break through with God. Number one, strange dimensions of favor. There is, a, there is a, an unusual degree of favor. Is God's signature. He writes it upon your life that the training for this phase has come to an end. You have been approved. He uses favor. Dimensions of doors you never dreamt opening. I can tell you this happens. It doesn't matter how the night is. That when your day breaks, you will see favor that will bring you to your knees. When I talk of favor, I'm not talking money. I'm talking of the hearts of kings and nobles. Money is very small. God will take the hearts of kings and nobles and give you. It will be like a charm. You will call on a man and nations will respond. You have become Beulah and Hephzibah. The delight. Number two. Genuine, authentic spiritual power. Genuine spiritual power. Not trial and error. Not like God will come. Not like God will move. Something solid upon you. Provable. Genuine spiritual power. You speak the purposes of God to men's lives. And you will shift lives overnight. Power. 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 Number three, the third thing that happens to you when you stand with God is that God multiplies both your spiritual and your physical influence. He increases the reach of the grace he has put upon your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every man is limited by the jurisdiction a portion for his grace to function there are men who can stand from anywhere and speak over nigeria it doesn't matter the grace given to them and the expansion they have attained unto in the spirit covers that sphere elijah stood in one place and spoke over an entire land there were times when jesus had to leave one land to enter another land to pray for a person what was the reward of the five, two, and one talent, greater territory, greater influence in the spirit. When kings conquered certain lands, they had increased territory. America is called America today because it's the unity of many states. One American state can be three times Nigeria. One state. Are we together now? Yes. Is why it's called United States of America. In Nigeria, you can pass through a state in 30 minutes. And there are times in the state you will fly for hours from one state to the other. There is no state that is more than one hour, 10 minutes. Maiduguri to Lagos is the farthest distance. 
One hour, ten minutes exactly, you are there. But you will fly for hours. That is the reason why whoever sits as the president of that territory must be respected by every devil whether they like it or not. It is the reason why the American president is the number one president. Because there are many in one state is the destiny of many nations. The per capita income of just one state will swallow up many African countries. So when God expands your sphere, dimensions where your grace would not reach, now you can speak from one place and they can hear from home. Before you had to go home for them to hear. But now God has expanded your influence. And they say, won't you come again? You say, no problem. He has upgraded the grace. For I am also a man under authority. Right from where I am, I can say to one, come. And he cometh. Go. And he goeth. It's like a ranking in the spirit. One of my old secondary school classmates, my father got to meet with him recently and now he's a major in the army. I think at the threshold of the next rank. What's the next rank? After, after major. Lieutenant Colonel, yes. I think soon that's what they are going to give him. He used to be a fearful, chicken-like young guy. I remember when they take us from Joss to go to our school, he would start crying even before we go out of Joss. I never cried once to leave home. It was a delight and a pleasure to get out. That guy was so girlish and feminine. I wondered, but that guy today is a major. Sometimes he would stand and do some things, you know, he could see a roach, cockroach, and you know how ladies would jump. But today he can tell me, kneel down, hands up, you civilian, except for the fact that <laughs> when I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Can we spend two minutes to pray? Let's pray the prayer of Jabez. Enlarge my territory. Please lift your voice and pray. Enlarge me, O God. Take away the spirit of smallness from my life. It doesn't give you glory that I remain small. Not after an encounter with you. Not after seasons, defining moments with you. Pray the prayer of Jabez. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. That thou wouldest expand, enlarge my territory. Pray for koinonia. Pray for your business. Lord, enlarge my territory. He said, where we meet with you is too straight. Let us move beyond the Jordan. Please pray God is hearing you you're not wasting your time it has been said no one rose beyond certain levels in your family but can you pray the prayer of Jabez expand my territory oh God I will go where the fathers have not gone I will eat the milk and the wine of Canaan. I will not die in the wilderness. He did not bring me from Egypt to leave me in the wilderness. There is a land that flows with milk and honey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray. You don't have to come out. But I want to pray specially for people in this place tonight. You just sense in your life 
that there seems to be a fierce attack on your life this is not just a dealing with god this one you know is demonic it's like all hell breaking loose over you over your family over your spiritual life over whatever it is your business i want to pray for you and i want you to believe it is for this cause that the lord says to not neglect the gathering of the brethren because it's an opportunity for a supply of his power even when your seasons come to the end there has to be a man he said destroy it not for there is a blessing in it i want to pray for such people suddenly your prayer life just went down you come fast from six to six by 11 you are almost collapsing you can't even breathe it's an attack as a man of god you found out that it looks like you open the bible and your page is empty you are not seeing anything again every verse looks confusing every something is wrong strange attack on your church members are suddenly leaving everybody is suddenly hating you people you have labored to raise in the gospel are now turning against you it's an attack you used to prophesy correctly but now you just found out that you entered a season of nonsense everything you say is not correct word of knowledge not correct your prophecy not correct it's an attack it doesn't mean you are wrong it means the devil is attacking your credibility so that you will no longer be trusted finances you are a hard-working diligent person all of a sudden it looked like holes came in your pocket all doors just closed no destiny helper again even those who promise to help you it's as if something turned their backs against you it's an attack my brothers and my sisters you need to pray all of a sudden your children started becoming something else people you have labored and trained they now no longer listen to you you say a they say b you say keep quiet they tell you to keep quiet something is wrong strange devilish dreams nightmares you can't dare lie down on your bed to sleep here they come pressing you molesting you attacking you it will take the grace of god to struggle yourself to wake up it's an attack what of reports from home you are enjoying the glory of god just about to take a nice step they just call you they pay you some areas that you are trusting God to just use and buy a small land and you hear an attack that someone needs chemotherapy or, or whatever it is and they need to spend 35 to 100,000 every week and it is you they are depending on say devora say it again say devora I say devora because you don't do it everybody says you are a wicked young man who is allowing your father or mother to die and you pay 70 70 thousand in in five or six weeks your money is gone there are many ways believers can be attacked and i pray for you i don't know who is in that category but i believe the lord put this meeting tonight you don't have to kneel just believe believe Jesus, the Son of God, I believe in you. Father, you have anointed me for the sake of your people. And I bring before you, O oh God, 
the thousands of people in this place thousands and millions others from around the world who are being fiercely attacked by the devil and his cohorts in an attempt to corrupt your testimony over their lives i bring before you families that have been fiercely attacked businesses fiercely attacked destinies marriages spiritual lives ministries churches and by that attack your people have been discouraged they have been exhausted and frustrated tonight in the name of jesus i decree and declare that every spirit responsible for this attack by the spirit that raised christ from the dead we crush the works of darkness now pay attention i'm praying for you i decree and declare that if this is as a result of territorial covenants activities of ancestry that authorize darkness to launch attacks over lives over churches over ministries over individuals mysterious diseases that you had no part in i pray by the god of heaven tonight let there be liberty for you let there be liberty for you let there be liberty for you i challenge suicidal spirits over this territory of zaria the spirits that cause young people to kill themselves and waste their lives in the name that is above all names we command that spirit is banished from this territory the spirit of discouragement the spirit of exhaustion in the name of jesus we declare be gone now and forever He says, the Lord shall deliver you from six things, yea, seven things. And one of it is the scourging tongues of men. The scourging tongues. Pronouncements work, my brothers and my sisters. Some of you acted in a way and manner that out of anger, some men of God opened their mouths under the influence of the grace God gave them and they made utterances concerning your destiny like elisha some of you laughed at certain men of god and they made utterances and there are things devouring you you cannot explain listen there are some of you his parents maybe be, before you now started to be serious with god you talk nonsense to parents and they looked at you and said may your children do the same thing for you you would think they were just joking the realm of the spirit is a legal realm believe it or not whether you believe it or not doesn't change that reality the scourging tongues like a scourge a scourge is a whip a cane that the, that the mouth of a man can become a whip over a man's destiny It takes people to speak also over your life. There are some of you, maybe you were in certain churches and you ran your mouth against men of God, laboring in the spirit, either because of their weaknesses, because of their mistakes. You opened your mouth. Some of you maybe even insulted them directly. And like Noah, they got up from their sleep and cursed you and said, a servant of servants shall you be. He said, God forbid it will not happen, but it's happening and you are seeing it. Yes, ago, I remember a man who I think he said something against Bishop Oyedeko. And Bishop Oyedeko cursed him. 
and he you know laughed it over and believed it will not happen and for the next few years of that man's life things went down until he went for prayer and a true prophet of God said ah, I'm trying to bless you and I'm seeing that that blessing is not coming something you have offended a man of God he said to go and if you can apologize to him you may not have time to do all of that but that prayers need to be offered otherwise you will be surprised how long that thing will remain on your head there are things in your life that should not go wrong something is making it go wrong exactly what the blessing does is what a cause does in the negative hallelujah satan is behind many predicaments of our lives satan is behind many of the ills that continue to happen please let me have your attention because i want to pray now and the power of god listen please as i begin to pray there are people here you see god may not necessarily don't worry it's okay excuse me that's all right leave your seats please there are people here who are sincere people even believers but your life and destiny is under the strange influence of the operation of darkness the bible says many things happen in mount zion and one of it is that where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty please i like you to believe this is no ordinary prayer remember it is the spirit and the bride that is talking you are only seeing the bride but it's the spirit and the bride i'm about to pray and i want you to please believe because everything that does not represent christ must go today now A few weeks ago I had an encounter and the Holy Spirit told me you are about to experience a new lifting in your authority in the spirit listen please this is the first time I'll be sharing it and I saw every time I see it this is what I see I see like a badge in the spirit a promotion and the, the Lord said, I will put power upon your lips in another dimension that as you declare, you will see it happen. It's, this thing is a grace. It's a grace. It is not every time a man declares with power. There are times that you declare with authority. It's an office. Let me pray. Thank you, Jesus. There is a very serious deliverance that is about to happen. And please, I want you to bring the people in front. I'm seeing yokes. I'm telling you, I'm seeing real bondages. God has anointed this place to be a place of liberty. Right now I declare by the spirit of the Christ. And I decree and declare. That in the name of Jesus. At the count of three I want you to shout that name that is above every other name. And except God is not God. Any planting that is not of the Christ. Over your life and your destiny. I speak by the grace of God almighty. That he must let you go now one two three shout Jesus bring them out bring them out in the name of Jesus I command devils I command spirits yokes that have tied down the destinies of men be gone now by the spirit of the Christ the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit go now release every destiny release every destiny release every destiny 
Release every destiny. Release every destiny. Release every destiny. I decree and declare. The Bible says even the captives, the lawful captives shall be delivered. Therefore I declare that every legal access upon which the devil is holding on to anyone's destiny right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost be delivered now 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 I command closed doors be open closed doors be open right now be open closed by the hand of darkness I declare be open be open now be open now be open now is showing me chains over people's heads I decree and declare anyone here under any kind of yoke at the count of three inside outside online I want you to shout that name again it's not a ritual done out of unbelief there is force and power in the name one two three every orchestration go now be loose now. Be loose now. In the name of Jesus, be loose. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. The Lord is showing me people who have been at the same level for many years there is nothing you do in time that moves you forward in the name of Jesus I'm seeing fire just rising from my limbs I'm about to pray that prayer anyone who has been kept at the same position right now by the anointing of the spirit I declare that limitation broken now broken now help them broken now broken now broken now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Right away, I want to pray against barrenness. I'm sensing the grace. Don't wait till you are married. If there is anyone here by the Spirit of God, by whatever means, your womb has been closed. By the authority of heaven, I declare right now, I'm seeing the anointing coming on a number of people. Married or unmarried, let that womb be open now. Be open now. Be open now. I tell you, the anointing of God is coming on people. Whether you are married or not, some of you are standing in for your loved ones. I declare again, womb be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. I command every devil. Ah, I'm seeing such... I'm still seeing people's feet tied like a chain around the feet of people. Right now I decree and declare every chain holding anyone now. 
in the name of Jesus I break those chains now 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 hallelujah if you have any abdominal pain lay your hands right now lay your hands just on your stomach any kind of abdominal pain doesn't matter whether it's a fibroid doesn't matter whatever just lay your hands here right now in the name that is above all names i decree and declare right now the anointing of the holy ghost is coming upon your stomach area and in the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle right now. Let there be a miracle right now. I'm seeing a number in the realm of the spirit 21. And the Lord is saying an anointing is coming on those people. And that grace is for direction. You are at a point in your life where you are confused. You honestly don't know what to do. But right now I stretch my hands, 21. I see it in the realm of the spirit. Right now, let the anointing of the Spirit bring in direction, ending confusion. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Direction, direction, direction in ministry, direction in business, direction, geographic direction. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for speed. I'm going to continue praying for speed until I see it manifest. Now, please hear me. Because of what happens when I pray for speed, the ushers are limited. Make sure that you protect anyone because people will start running up and down. That grace for speed must find expression. I will continue to pray it until you leave your current level. I stretch my hands by the privilege of God's grace and I declare, I don't know what has caused delay, but the mantle that commands speed right now at the count of three, Koinonia, hear me. One, two, three, receive speed. Speed, speed, speed in your destiny. Speed. Do in one month what one year could not do. Do in one month what five years could not do. Do in one month in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're trying to conserve time. There is a lot to do. Who is Janet? I'm hearing a name, Janet. 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 All those who are in front under the anointing here, I command the devils that have oppressed you. This is the house of God. Right now at the count of three, release them. Release everything you have tied down. One two three go go now every strange spirit go now go now now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty janet i'm hearing a name janet hold on please don't don't be rowdy just relax stand up my dear that lady on green stand up where are you coming from Huh? You are from Kaduna State. Relax, calm down. I want to pray for you. Listen, God is not just calling names at random. I want to pray for you. You can expect that there will be so many genets. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. One of you, as I'm, I'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you right now. It's, it's not something you can stand. The power of God, we're going to have to do a quick work because we want to take out time and minister to the sick. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. There's one of you, the anointing of the Spirit, 
let's just walk that instruction first in the name of Jesus I decree and declare on all of you I may not have time to prophesy one by one but every barrier that stands between you and the next level I declare let it go now I curse it by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ the power of God is coming on a lady just where this my brothers are standing bring that person just this row I'm seeing a cloud just right here right now as I'm speaking the anointing of the Spirit is coming on one person there please bring the person is a lady bring her Janet I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ hi this is an instruction God is giving me there is a family I'm seeing the family it's a whole pattern nobody marries no matter what happens I'm about to pray the power of God is coming on that one person for the sake of the family please I want you to believe and receive I declare that marital delay this is the instruction God is giving me break now break now break now break now the Lord is opening my eyes and in the realm of the spirit I'm seeing the map of Benway state an anointing is coming right now on Benway God is bringing a miracle I release my I stretch my hands and I declare a miracle right now it's a sign and a wonder how God does it Benway state Benway state Benway state I curse the workings of darkness over that territory in the name of Jesus, be free in the name of Jesus. The Lord is taking me to a neighboring state. I'm literally seeing myself in Kogi state. And the Lord is saying he's breaking witchcraft. I don't know who are those who are from there, but I stretch my hands. Kogi state, may that anointing come upon anyone associated with that territory that is under the yoke of bondage be free now be free now Kogi state be free now be free now God does these things that men will fear him my sister look at me shout Jesus as loud as you can Something is leaving you. This is what I'm seeing. For you and for your family members. Let that devil never return to you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. I'm hearing a name Agnes prophecy takes a lot of time so we we'll just minimize it so that I'm hearing the name Agnes 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 I'm hearing that name please very quickly because I want to take out time and God is visiting three families at overflow two. 
overflow two, the overflow by the roadside. I just saw an anointing, just like fire. Three families, three families by the spirit of the living God. Agnes, who is Agnes? You are Agnes. You are Agnes, your sister. No, you are not here for your sister. You are here for yourself. Come. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, this spirit must let you go. There is a very violent spirit that, that is attempting to take advantage of this lady's life. I declare now by the spirit of God, the covenant and the ordinance that authorizes you in the life of this lady comes under judgment now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that violent devil must let you go now even by the spirit of the there is no hiding place in the name of Jesus there is no hiding place for the unfruitful works of darkness I curse you by the God of heaven and I declare you must let her go alongside everything you have planted in her life in the name of Jesus Christ just hold that there I'm going to hold your hand. It's a strange mystery. I'm going to hold your hand, but the person who will fall is on this road. Bring the person for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, just don't worry, leave the baby. The person who will fall is not this lady. It's on this road, like this, this road right to the back. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare by the spirit of the living God, that everything that does not name the name of Christ right now I command it must go in the name of Jesus Christ it must go by the grace of God I set you free my dear in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father there is please don't be embarrassed we may not prophesy to everyone but there is a woman here don't be embarrassed you just had a miscarriage usually i would not ask you to come but the lord is asking to come out who is that person please There is a Yoruba family that is under a very strange attack. Under a strange attack. I'm praying right now. I don't know where they are, but I'm going to pray for you by the Spirit. Please don't confuse the cases so that I can minister to them. In the name of Jesus, I pray for that family. It's a Yoruba family from Kwara State. Yoruba family from Kwara State. I'm seeing it by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. That family is here or anyone who represents that family I declare freedom right now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus I pray for you my dear that everything that is not the planting of the Lord the hand of God is upon you and the Lord is saying in the seasons that come you are going to start having visitations there is a visitation that God is bringing and that visitation is preparing you for where he is taking you to and the Lord is saying that you'll be faithful. In the name of Jesus, I declare it so, even by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you step into that level and that dimension. You are the woman with the miscarriage. You are married. Please don't feel, I hope you are not embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, huh? Because that's the same way you will come here and testify. Listen, God is not going to embarrass you for nothing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. This is one big family and we're intelligent people. We will never come and just embarrass someone like that. If there's anything that looks embarrassing, just know that these things um, are spiritual. My dear, that young lady, go in. Come, lift your hands. God is not done with you yet. Huh? This is, this is, you would have left this girl now. She would have probably just gone like that. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare take what you put in her dream life 
Let it leave now. Take what you put inside her through the dream. Miscarriage. Please come. Please don't feel embarrassed. This is a family. Did I pray for you? Did I pray for you? It's all right. If I prayed for you, just go back. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go and return with your child according to the time of life. No more miscarriage whatsoever. In the name of Jesus, you will return with child according to the time of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, please place your hand. In the name of Jesus, return with child. Return with child. In the name of Jesus. There is someone here, you are in ministry. I've not done the impartation yet, but I'm seeing an anointing come on you. And this is for your ministry. There is a level of expansion that you have been praying for. And God is about to answer that prayer. I stretch my hands. I don't know where that person is. But in the name that is above all names, may that anointing, like a mighty rushing wind, in the name of Jesus. There's someone here, God, this night, is giving you a ministry to teenagers. An anointing is coming on you, your ministry will be to teenagers. I don't know where that person is, but Lord, I stretch my hands. Right now, may that man to find the person. In the name of Jesus, I birth that ministry by the Spirit. I birth that ministry by the hand of God. Inside here, outside, I declare, in the name of Jesus, let there be a birthing. I draw from the bowels of prophecy, and I declare that ministry is better tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Your sister and you, why is she here? Miscarriage? Are you married? You're sure? In the name of Jesus, place your hand there. I agree with you. Every plague of miscarriage goes now. In the name of Jesus Christ, according to the time of life, return with your child. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your sister, where is she? Abuja. Tell her that she was prayed for and she should expect a miracle. In the name of Jesus, I declare. You're standing in for her, but I declare the power of God is upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are four people who are receiving the mantle for prayer and intercession. No, I know that it's, it's, a, it's a grace we will all desire, but there are four exact people. Four exact people. Some inside, some outside. Lord, I don't know where they are, but that grace, a dimension of the intercessory ministry, capacity to travail by the Spirit, In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is she here? Come. Where are you from? Kaduna. How long have you been married? Last year. Last year. Madam, you came out here for miscarriage, but what God is dealing with is more than miscarriage, huh? We'll pray for you. Where's your husband? Here, sir. Because I'm seeing him here. Is he here? Yes, sir. Where is he? Husband, please come. Thank you. Is the man here? How are you, my friend? Stand up. God is about to change your life. I don't know you. What do you do, sir? Where? I'm up in Kaduna. Kaduna, I want to pray for you. Where are you from? I'm from Ojibwe. There is a grace. Please hear me. What, what, where do you work? I work with the Alliance of Africa. 
There are two things I'm seeing. One, I'm seeing real estate. Number two, I'm seeing distribution. Distribution of things. Go and write them down and pray over them. This is where your money is. This is where the grace of God. You hear what I'm telling you? You see, sometimes God will not violate your will. You can choose to do anything you do. But because of the openness of your heart, he will give you direction. The Lord is my shepherd, he says, I shall not want. So when God directs you, he will take away want and lack from you. And that's why I said this is more than just the issue of barrenness or whatever it is. Huh? We'll pray for you. And madam, I want to stop the dreams. Dreams. Huh? I have to pray for you. Sometimes you don't share them. But there are dreams that are oppressions, a lot of oppressions. I want to pray for you. This will end in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, this is July, August, September. By October, write it down. Your life will change. Do you know what just entered you? You didn't just fall under the anointing. You see, my, my brother, the realm of the spirit, what is on you is what controls what is around you. Don't worry, I'm going to pray for you. It's the grace for favor that came on you. Amen. And I declare and I prophesy over you by the spirit of God. These three months, may your life change in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, put your hand in your, on your stomach. According to the time of life, huh? in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm seeing something like a rope being loosed from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. Listen, you will come with your wife and stand here. Look at their faces and remember them. So that the day they come and stand, it's, it's not to glorify a man. It is to show that God, oh, God is still alive. Huh? I lose this in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will return with a strange miracle. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Sir, can I talk to you please? This man. Yes, sir. Where are you coming from, sir? Kaduna. Kaduna. I don't know you. Is it alright if I pray for you? I want to pray for you. Three things. Number one, I want to pray that sickness will not take you to the grave. Amen. I'm not a prophet of doom. This is our, our prophet. I want to pray for you. That's number one. Number two, I want to pray for you that everything that is yours that has not been released, let it come to you. Does it make sense what I'm telling yes, you? Sir. Yes, sir. I will pray for you. This is one of the reasons why you are here. I want to pray. It will surprise you the way God will release all kinds of financial blessings to come to you. And then number three, there is a man from Lagos that God is going to connect you with. God is going to use that man to turn your life around. I don't know what you do, but please, I want you to mark this. But the most important prophecy is sickness. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing that this thing is an attack. It will start one morning. You just stand up and they will say you are behaving as if you are talking to yourself and you are having memory loss. It's of the devil we must pray. Madam, come. God is about to change your life because you are praying and you are saying God should tell me to speak to you. Is that true? Yes, sir. Stand here. I'm, I'm standing here and I'm hearing your prayer. Yes. And you are saying the Lord should, that should visit yes, you, that you did not come from far for yes, nothing. Sir. Where did you come from? Come. Where are the other two people? We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Congratulate you in the name of Jesus. 
because your life will change in a very remarkable way. Madam, I want to pray for you. Look at me. Stand up, my friend. Why buy the life here? Who is sick? <laughs> Madam, I want to pray for you. You see, ba, when prophecy is used well, I'm seeing this woman, your right breast. Huh? If I don't pray for you, you're going to start having what looks like a growth. And it will later become cancer. Because I'm looking at this woman. No, don't worry, madam. I'm, don't be afraid. I'm looking at this woman on the bed and just whine. And they say, what is this? What happened to this woman? Jesus. Madam, you did not leave Adamawa State to come here to waste your time. Yes, no. Sir. I vowed a vow and prayed a prayer that never should there be a time when I will have the opportunity to minister. And the people say, oh, it was just like before. Never, 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 never. That every one encounter will leave a deposit of God in your life. Hallelujah. Sir, I want to pray for you. He's, where is he coming from? Adam Awatu. I need to pray. There is bad luck in your life. Come, you are a very nice man, but please stand up. Please stand up. I, don't cry. Oh, yeah. oh dear. You see, but let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes people are carrying pain. Oh. You just see people laugh and praise the Lord. That, that is a dance of faith. It's just a, a joy of faith because I'm looking at this man. You will not believe what this man has gone through. Is that true? What do you do, sir? I'm a launderer. Washing with his hand. Yes. This is what I'm saying. This man, Kai, oh dear. This man is supposed to be connected to a politician in Adamawa State. This is this man's destiny based on what the Lord is showing me. His name is Zechariah. Yes, he's presenting this is what I'm telling you. Just listen. Let me prophesy to you. I'm seeing that this man's destiny is supposed to be with a member. And yet he's doing... Now, I'm not saying laundry is an insult. But the way he's doing it, this is not a blessing. Um, I don't know what happened. We had a good relationship. And just of a sudden... He changed. He changed. No, he did not change. Somebody told him huh, that they can use you to kill him. And that he has, it's not only you. I'm not a pro, don't go around fighting anybody. Huh? That this man one day will kill him. They were saying, Honorable Kayankali, be careful. Don't allow people to just come around you like that who already know you. Because the enemy within is outside. That's why he lost relationship with you and cut everything away. You see, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, God reveals this thing to tell you this world we live in is not a playground. If you don't sustain spiritual intelligence, look at how may your enemies not get to the gates before you. That the counsel of Ahitophel can turn a man's destiny. And this man, it's not that he's using a laundry to wash him clothes like, a, like an animal. Sir, you have come here for God to change your life. And I'm praying for you by the God of heaven, the one who put this miracle service together. Let things change now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I declare favor upon your life. Let things turn around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, what do you want God to do for you? English, how sir, speak anyone. <laughs> Divide visitation in every area of my family. I will pray for I you. I want male children. <laughs> oh, healing. You have female children. I have two. And you I want a male. Allergies. Yes, I need male children. That's what, uh, there's a reason why I shifted the mic. I don't want you to say what you're about to say loud, huh? Because one day your husband will be changed and he will hear this, this miracle service message. It's true. I want to pray for you. You see, please let me advise us. It's God that gives children. And, and 
I don't mean to insult anyone, but please, let's be careful. This issue of give me male children, give me female children, otherwise you are not this. I mean, it's even better to come to a man of God to pray for you than to antagonize your wife or husband. There is a culture of the kingdom. Listen, when we get born again, the values, the value system of the kingdom, the spirit life must be at work in us. In as much as I know sincerely that it is beneficial to have children, male and female. When our people are getting married, I pray for them that God will give them children, male and female. But you cannot antagonize your wife or your husband and say, give me male children, female children. Of course, I understand I'm, I'm an African because of issues of inheritance and other things, but we have to be careful whatever god has not given you you cannot have it and if you go to the devil to have it let me tell you the consequence will be waiting for you are we together madam look at me do you believe if i pray for you yes, you will come here with a male child yes sir yes sir I I I madam what did you see me doing for you in a dream sir <laughs> Listen, number one, number one, God is bringing favor to your life. Number two, you will stand on this very altar with a male child. I want you to believe it. You believe that? Hold my hands. Father, please turn the life of this woman in the name of Jesus. Let it please you to open her womb and give her a male child. And we agree, we receive that your husband is born again and he's walking in the ways of God. In the name of Jesus. Madam, the Lord is going to connect you with some, a woman from Maiduguri. Where are you from? I'm from Adama. We have together. She's my okay. Sister. I'm going to pray for you. A, a woman, she does textile and clothing. Kaya cloth. This woman will bless you in a way that it will look like it's a charm. Yeah. Believe what I'm telling you. Father, I decree and declare, surprise these people by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I bless you. God changes your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Mama, that mama with blue, come. Who came from Kano? From where? Air Force Base. This is your husband. What do you want God to do for him? Don't cry. You know, I preached a message here and I said, God can do it, Abby, madam. Mm. Since 2005, no child. No messes again. Everything has gone. Madam, stand up. Please, if you are in ministry here, hear me. Reduce your public life. Go back to the secret place and get real power. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Let me repeat it, please. If you are in ministry, I say this, please. Reduce public life. Watching football. Going for marriages that you don't have any business. I'm not saying you should not honor people. But the times that we are living in now, the problems on people, is not just sermons. People are in real trouble. We must trust God for grace to stay in the spirit until you get something genuine that can solve people's problems. 2005, how many years is that? 14 years, no child, her period ceased completely, the devil sat on it. Let me see how you will have a child. Madam, don't cry, it's okay. I don't know you, I've never seen you. You can see, how will you be sitting there and then God will just call you. I want to pray for you. Madam, please hear me. I'm saying it in the open. I didn't say it in your ears. I want you to go and prepare. Huh? I'm seeing
Where is your husband? Anybody who wants to come and destroy your family by giving you something to drink, eh? In the name of Temeko, I, I, I banish them far. You hear what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing a man, I'm not, please, I love the body of Christ, but I'm seeing someone come supposedly a prophet, but what this man is doing is not prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? What now? Six months. Yes. He has gone away. He, he just, I, I went to his office to tell him that I'm coming to Zaria today. So he now said, uh, he, uh, he just looked at me. You are not divorced, <laughs> but he has just gone. Sir? He, he just went, but you are not divorced. Uh, he's saying uh, where, they are, where they are drinking this thing, so he just left me. He may not, don't, don't be too quick to judge the man. See, let me tell you this. You see, Ba. When people go through things, be careful. When you are about to cross people and call them evil and call them this, remember that stability is according to the measure of your understanding of who God is. And there are times that even the strong get pushed to the wall. So don't be too quick. We are people of love. Don't come here and start thinking and saying, especially if you know the woman and think the husband is this. Mm -mm. We are not here to show who is right or who is wrong. We are here to show that there is a God in heaven. Are we together? Madam, hold my hands. I command this spirit in the name that is above all names to release your womb in the name of Jesus. Madam, I speak to you. First, may God reconcile you back to your husband. Second, you will take in according to the time of life. Your baby will stay and you will return back with the child. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every orchestration that is not of God to keep you barren and to destroy your marriage, I curse it now in Jesus' name. See, anyone here, I'm, I'm praying for the ladies now, then we'll pray for the sick. We have to be fast. But no, you don't have to come out. But you are here, the moment you start a relationship with a guy, he becomes serious and just when he's deciding to do anything marriage, it must scatter. You continue to enter relationships, relationships, re loving and unloving, loving and unloving. Today you are in love, tomorrow nonsense manufactures itself. I'm praying right now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit because it's a yoke that must be destroyed. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, inside and outside, anyone who is under that category by the god of heaven let the power of god come on you now to end that captivity let the power of god come on you now to end that captivity you see please give this woman her photo that woman under the anointing we have to pray um, the Lord is asking me, we are praying. I, I hope I'm not boring you. I'm not wasting your time. The Lord is showing me a family here. I may not ask you to come out. But in this family, you never settle maritally, but you will have children. No matter how you go around it, you find out that you have children out of marriage. out of And, and it's not like the men will be there to take responsibility and take care of the children. The Lord wants to deliver that family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah. Please come out. Please come out. But I'm going to pray. Whether you know it or not. You see, the thing about the anointing, I told you. Sometimes God locates people distinctly just to talk to them, to encourage and build their faith. But it doesn't matter where you are. I want to pray now that, that you cannot get married happily with a ring and settle down and have children. But the devil will manipulate that you will continue to have children. I pray right now. I don't know where they are, but in the name of Jesus Christ, Shabakato Kakis Kaparanda Kadosha Lakata.
We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. That yoke is destroyed now. My dear, look at me. Come. It's your season of laughter. The Lord is saying I should tell you. You see, let me tell you. For all the pain that you've gone through, I want you to hear me. God himself is turning your life around. Because let me remind you, even as he has reminded you that it pays to serve Jesus. Sometimes you will look foolish while you are doing it. Let me encourage someone here. It pays to serve Jesus. It may not look like he will come every day. But the day he comes, he will come with dignity and honor. And lift you in a way that whoever has laughed at you will have to bend their head in shame. I'm praying for you. Hold my hands. Father, in Jesus' name, confirm your word. You have said that it's a season of laughter. I call it so and I declare that everything that stands as a blockade to your joy and laughter leaves your way now. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, someone will run out under the anointing. Hold the person and bring the person out. That will be the last prophecy. The power of God is coming on someone. It's not something you can control. By the anointing, you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Please. When that happens, bring the person. I need to speak to the person and then we'll pray for the sick right now. It's a very strange anointing and you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Meanwhile, let this lady come. Thank you. My dear, hold my hands. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus, I'm rebuking something you don't know anything about. But in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it goes now over by the grace of God. There are two ladies here. Only married men look for you. A, a responsible, godly gentleman will never seem to be interested in you. But when you find a married man, sometimes with children... That's the one that will come to you. I'm praying. I know there may be many people, but these are two people in the name that is above all names. I declare right now, whatever is on you that continues to compel married men, in the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit now. I cause so something is burning here. I cause that spirit now. I cause that devil now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be embarrassed, but I see the spirit of lust on this lady. I stretch my hands. Let that devil leave you now. That a man cannot come and pass this lady quietly and successfully. There's something that must continue to draw. In the name of Jesus, by the spirit of the living God, I curse that spirit. And I declare it must let you go now. It must release you now. By the God of heaven, I declare, be free from that spirit. Right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray for the sick. Our time is gone. But we have to do this very fast. And like I said, please, please listen. All the people who will be praying for you, I just want you to believe. Um, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three. If you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, please not standing for anybody. And aside from those who are prayed for, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, then join the prayer line here. I want to pray for you myself. Just the fruit of the womb. Are we together? Now, of course, all who are here, you can come for your normal prayer. But particularly, if you, are, if you came here trusting God for the fruit of the womb, this, this fruit of the womb issue is becoming a serious issue. And we need to deal with it once and for all. Now, we are going to do this fast. All the people ministering to you will do it very, very fast and pray for you. 
while you are doing that, please, how many of us came with our prayer request? For those of us who are visitors, there's still room for you. You can quickly pen down your request and wave it. Ushers will be moving around to collect PR. Please help them. And let's just make this very fast and make this snappy. But overflow one, um, overflow two, overflow three, and then the overflow from the building right to second equa and down. Let's call that overflow four. Okay, okay, there is, there is overflow 2B, then there is overflow 4. Please listen, this is overflow 1, this is overflow 2, there is overflow 2B from this place right to the roadside, second equa down, then there's overflow 4, just from the gate of overflow 3, then we have overflow 3 in the main building, and then online. Please make your way, come out and stand according to those various overflows, there will be people there to minister to you right now. We'll do it very fast. Our time is gone. Please submit your prayer request. I'll be laying hands on all of them here right now. You can just wave them. There will be someone by your side. We apologize for those of you standing because your seats were foiled. You would soon have it back and then be back to your seat. If there are visitors, some of you who are members, clear the way for them. They can sit down temporarily, please. If you are here, you are part of us. You can allow them to sit on your seat pending when their seats will be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. rise up on your feet. Thank you for your patience. Stretch your hands to this request. Please, if there are still requests um, that are not here, let's have them here very quickly so that we can pray. Please understand that this is not a ritual. God really answers prayers. There is a God in heaven who is in this service. This is a prophetic representation of our pain, our expectations. There may not be time to speak to everyone. There may not be time to minister to everyone as we would want to. But then I want us to agree right now. Stretch your hands and begin to pray in the spirit. As I lay my hands upon this request, we are declaring that every request here must be turned into a testimony. Baratos calabrandege baratos kedi. Apratos zadege baratos shalekatos. Ente prata salagato brati kedi. Kalabrandege 
Stretch your hands and believe. We are declaring God is answering prayers now. Hallelujah. I stand upon with my bare foot on this prayer request and I declare by the Spirit of God. Even as God has instructed me, I declare that every request here by the Spirit of grace, let it be turned into your testimony. That in the name that is above all names, there are, hold on please, there are people here, this is a death sentence. There are people here, this is an impossible situation. There are people here, God will, the person God will talk to is far. But I pray, what looks impossible, I bow my knees to the God of heaven, the one who honors me when I pray, and I convert every request here to a testimony this night. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living Lord, I decree and I declare by the spirit of faith, that by this time next month, you return here rejoicing. Please, don't let the devil lie to you and say it will be as it has always been. Uh-uh. 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 Every anointing that must be released towards your direction for this prayer to be answered, we release it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every pattern that is not just an individual, but is a pattern that is written here. As God is visiting you here, every other person connected to you whose request you have written here, we command a miracle for them where they are. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are situations here that need the blood. I declare by the mystery of the blood. There are three that bear witness in the heavens. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. In the name of the Lord God of heaven, by the mystery of the blood of the eternal covenant, we cancel every ordinance that sponsors continuity of this request. In the name of Jesus. And the king could not sleep in the night. And he said, bring me the chronicles. And he saw there written what Mordecai did. Whoever must remember you, for this request to be granted by the God of heaven, we open the book of remembrance tonight. Any man holding what belongs to you, which is the reason why you are writing anything here, we put pressure on them to release it now. Every family here webbed in shame and reproach. It looks like there is no dignity. The speakings of God does not seem to find expression here. I agree with you tonight by the God of heaven. Please help those under the anointing. That by the power of the Holy Ghost, shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Therefore, I decree and declare that these Egyptians you have dropped here, by the God of heaven, may you see them no more forever. May you see them no more forever. The same way I stand upon this request, I command that you stand upon every challenge. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I speak over your life. 
the doors that have followed you here closed in the name of Jesus please believe let your don't be distracted focus on the word of God in the name of Jesus I command those doors be open now be open now be open now be open now every grounded ministry here every grounded business every grounded family hear the word of the lord i command and i declare come back to life come back to life come back to life come back to life every helper assigned from god who has not yet paid attention to you and what you request i stand by the god of heaven and in the name of jesus i compel them to attend to your matters i compel them to attend to your matter i compel them to attend to your matter Everything that should have happened and has not yet happened according to the program of God you know you should have entered that level and you are not there by prophecy I push you to that level by prophecy I push you to that level listen you see let me tell you what I'm doing I'm not just speaking I'm placing something upon your life you may not see it but you leave this place and watch what happens to you then you will see things turn around let me pray for you the kind of favor that must bring acceleration to your life please receive this one in the name that is above all names may that mantle like a cloak take favor take favor carry favor Carry favor in the name of Jesus. Every area you have struggled in your life, you have done what you know to do in the name of Jesus. I declare that that struggle comes to end now. Now please listen, the anointing your destiny needs for this season, please listen, every season has a grace requirement, every season, there are doors that don't just open because you stand in front of them, yesterday's anointing will not move you to tomorrow's place, I pray for you, this is an impartation, wherever you are, I declare like the dew of heaven, the kind of grace you must carry for this season, let it land on your destiny now. By this anointing, I forbid you from being ignored. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forbid you from being ignored. I forbid you from being trivialized. No man will look down on you. They came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. The things that must be done through your hands in this season, for it to be said, this is the Lord's doing. As you are lifting your hands, may a fresh unction from heaven come upon those hands for exploits. Anyone in ministry here, I declare over you, go back to your various assemblies and platforms. Let there be fire on your altar. Fire on your altar. Fire on the ministration. Let the gifts of the spirit work powerfully. In the name of Jesus. We're rounding up. Let's pray over our finances. This issue of finance is bringing many people to their knees. 
bringing many families to their knees distracting people the time we should spend on the things of the kingdom we are focusing on money what to eat what to wear house rent building projects it is not the will of God in the name of Jesus Christ Ebenezer the helper of men I declare this month even beginning from today receive strange financial help receive strange financial help in the name of Jesus I prophesy to you strange financial help everyone under the sound of my voice trusting God for an honorable job listen there are jobs that don't have honor they are time wasters they are devourers I pray for you the kind of job that represents dignity that will honor you and help you to build your home well may the God of heaven give you such a job let me pray for your spiritual life if you have cars you have houses and your spiritual life is not on fire you are not doing well the first index to measure prosperity in the kingdom is the health of your spiritual life that your prayer life fire word life fire fellowship with the spirit fire no room for up today down tomorrow i pray for you fresh fire upon your prayer life 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 every lukewarmness slumber gluttony these spirits that destroy your spiritual fervency i declare in the name of jesus receive victory over them the grace that can keep a man in the presence of god the, the staying power that you can stay with the word stay in prayer not rushing and rush out and one power god is not a magician i pray for you the unction to stay receive it in the name of jesus every dimension in the spirit that is supposed to have been activated there are some of you now listen there are levels of graces you should have left sincerely there are dimensions of power there are haziness certain dimensions of haziness in your spiritual perception there is a level of authority there is an office you should be sitting on now but it's not yet there i pray for you the mantle that will shift you to that level may that grace come upon you now the mantle that will shift you to that level may that grace come upon you now listen everything in your life that has refused to grow God gave you a ministry that has refused to grow no membership nobody is placing a demand on your grace God gave you a business it has refused to grow no increase no impact anything that is alive grows whatever has stopped growth in your life i bring that thing to an end now finally let me pray please the spirit of infirmity i told you that this is this is i came to pray and rebuke that spirit because that spirit like the angel of death is moving over families attacking children attacking all kinds of people headache will just kill a man for nothing kata and they will say it's cancer pain around your breast they will say you have a malignant a tumor see let me tell you whatever you don't fight to victory will remain in your life challenges are not the issue 
but that you stand and fight the good fight of faith until you see what God said. If you have not seen what God said, don't stop. I pray for you. The spirit of a warrior, the grace that will cause you to refuse to allow things that are not the will of God. May that grace rest upon you now. As a body of believers, we agree that the spirit of infirmity first over this family, number two over this territory, and number three over the body of Christ. Thou spirit of infirmity, we banish your operation now. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day nor the noisome pestilence the destruction that wasted at noonday the spirit of death if there is anyone here that death is looming around the corridors of your life or your loved ones or those connected to you spiritually and by bloodline I declare let death lose its grip over you now Receive the last prayer that I pray for you to end this miracle service. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Please listen. Honor is a real grace. You can do everything to bring honor and yet honor will not come. Honor is not about usurping authority over people. There is a real grace. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. The kind of honor that needs to distinguish you for the sake of the kingdom in this season. May that grace and may that honor rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands everywhere and give Jesus praise. Mighty God. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Father, we thank you. By the wave offering we receive. We receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. Please let me say this. Let there be no movements till we are done. Every time we are almost done, many of you cancel out everything God has done through disobedience. Just give me two minutes and then we must leave. There are people here who are yet to truly surrender their life. Please keep standing. We believe in soul winning. And in reality, we believe that it is the greatest miracle. There are people here who came to this place confused. Looking for Jesus sincerely. Religion refused to give you. Sometimes we men of God disappointed you but you are still looking for Jesus. And there are others who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but the way my life is right now, I need help. Now, whatever, whether you are inside, outside, we have two minutes for you. Please, win that war this night. Don't sit down dilly-dallying. You know that you need Jesus. Wherever you are, inside, outside, I don't want you to be ashamed. Aside from overflow 3, overflow 2B, and overflow floor, you can just move to your various projector screens. But you are here, quickly. I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and stand here right now. Quickly. I don't expect you to be thinking about it. Keep standing. It's something you should know. Keep coming. Run to Jesus. Don't let any friend hold your hand. And say, don't embarrass yourself. Don't let any relative keep you bound. Our time is gone, but your salvation is important. Keep coming. Keep coming. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed. Win that war and come. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. If you are not sure, make your way and come quickly. 
Apostle, I'm a leader in my fellowship. Join them quickly. We have one more minute, please. Those coming from outside, quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those online following from whatever nation, doesn't matter. Once you are following and you can hear my voice, listen to me, please. Believers, listen. It is important that we never lose out on soul winning. Let me say this. It is not just an evangelical agenda. It is not an orthodox agenda. It is not a man of God agenda. It is the only way men come to this kingdom. No matter what we do, please, you're a man of God here, hear me. Don't be careless over soul winning. It is important that people be given an opportunity, except you don't know what salvation is. If you really understand what the new birth is, you will desire even your enemy to be saved. It is the only gateway. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Salvation is a giver's gift to you. You receive. I salute all of you who have come here. Some of you are standing here rededicating your lives. Some of you are not even sure what you are doing, honestly. Some of you are here genuinely for the first time. It doesn't matter. You see, the thing about the love of God is that the moment you call on his mercy, he will act as though he's not seeing what is wrong with you again. The mercy of God is powerful. Religion is what drives people away from God. Lift your right hand. Those around the various overflows, join them. Please say after me, sincerely, Jesus is in this place. You are not reciting a poem. This is from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. This night, I receive Jesus as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that according to Scripture, I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I'm not only heaven bound, but I reign in life. I receive of the Holy Spirit. From today, I declare and forever that I'm a child of God. Amen. I declare over you by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven the Lord himself is granting you a new beginning. I pray that you will know the ministry of the Holy Spirit in a new and a fresh way. I pray for you that you will know the anointing in a mighty way. For many of you who are standing here, may God use you to become mighty men and women of God. In the name of Jesus, I bless you with hunger for spiritual things. I bless you with passion for the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. A big congratulations. Now, please, I want all of you alongside um, those at the various overflows. There should be someone waving his or her hands. Please, I'd like you to follow them very quickly. And there will be a group of people who will address you. Let's do that very quickly. Let's do that quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. Now, our time is gone, but... Um, Please listen, we're about to take the announcements. Welcome the first timers and we're done. I sincerely apologize. Pray for us by God's grace. I know that God will grant us the grace. We'll soon have our place and we'll reschedule our services to allow us finish on time. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, I, I, know I welcome everybody. We're going to welcome the first timers now. But particularly, I just want to honor a few people. First, I want to bless our precious people, the delegates from um, the King's Court and the Oasis. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. The redeemed Christian Church of God, that's, um, that's the church that Nathaniel Bassi pastors. God bless you. Thank you. There are a group of people here, adorable people. These people take, they take care of me so much every time we have a meeting around their place and um, 
We love you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. I want us to honor the pastor from Ukraine. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you very much. And um, now I know there are so many people. Please don't find offense. It's by no way belittling you. Every We believe the law of honor is one of our foundational um, values, our pillars here. I just felt I am indebted to some of the people that are connected to these ones. And so I just wanted to to do that honor and i think i hope i'm right yes it should be him um i saw elisha maman somewhere he just squeezed himself that's him may god bless you very humble and very great man i love you may the lord bless you in the name of jesus every other person who has come here especially for those of you who came from so very far um aside from those that i called within a few minutes i'll request that you come um, and stand here so that we will honor you. We believe in honor. And I know that in many churches, they have different ways of receiving people, but we don't fake things and we don't pretend things here. When we call you out to honor you, we really mean it. It's not some Christian stage managed acting, no. Genuinely, sincerely. So wherever you are, aside from the extreme overflows, I would request that you just move to the front of your projector stand. But for those of us who are here, Overflow 1, Overflow 2, please gallantly walk and come right here. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we want to honor you. You're that important and we love you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? <laughs> Hallelujah. Please stand. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Let them come while I talk because of time. Keep coming. Let me tell you this. You see, it's all right. Praise God. Just listen to me while they come. It's a lesson that I want to teach all of us. Please learn this. Never take men for granted. When, when God honors you, please hear me, pastors. I tell you why we stop getting members in our churches. Because we get to points where we believe we are too big to honor the people. In other words, they don't mean anything. I always thank God and appreciate every one person who takes the pain to come here. Thank God for the wonderful things that he's doing. But remember that nobody is obliged anywhere to honor you and to promote what you represent. And when you find a people who can make such investments, value them. Are we together? Whether you're a pastor, whether you're a businessman, this world is the world of men. Place honor on men. He says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Influence is your blessing when you honor men. Thank you so much, every one of you. I wish I had the time to really walk to you one by one and hug every one of you. And I mean it from the depth of my heart. But on behalf of Jesus Christ himself, the apostle of the church, I welcome you to Koinonia in the name of Jesus. Many of you have heard about the wonderful things that God is doing here. Many of you have partaken of the same. And it's my joy to truly welcome you. You have come from far, within and outside this nation. Um, I'm sure that there are people here that cut across all walks of life. Thank you very much. We truly appreciate you. This is our miracle service. Um, we meet here Fridays and special times on Sundays. Um, when there's a fixed time, but I just want you to know that I love you. We love you as a family of faith. Thank you for taking the time, and um, we want to pray for you. Truly, let me tell you this. You will not have to tell people you came here. The glory and the kind of results you will see in your life will be a testament. Amen. Let's stretch our hands to them and bless them. We love you and we are praying for you. From the depth of our hearts, we are blessing you. Blessing your ministries, blessing your businesses, blessing your career, blessing your family. We want to see the hand of God upon your life. We want to see you loving the Lord like never before. We want to see you growing in the things of God. We want to see you walking in purpose and destiny. We want to see the gates of hell stamped by and through your life. This is why we pray for you. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. The Lord reveal himself to you. The Lord bring you into a dimension of intimacy. The Lord, please. Hello.
Scriptures exalt us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.